the last two undefeateds in Firelands Conference play go head to head tonight with the outright lead for the league title race awaiting the victor of this rivalry matchup as state ranked 10 0 Crestview takes on the 7 1 St. Paul Flyers. Live and free right here inside of the Cougars Den, streaming exclusively on the OH Report. And it's all coming your way next. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Hi, I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. This is the Scout Construction pregame show, setting up arguably the best rivalry the Firelands Conference has to offer with more at stake tonight than a butcher shop during hunting season. I'm Brian Skaronsky. Travis Berardi joins me here tonight. And what a matchup we have, bro. The top two teams in the league battling it out for first place here in the Firelands Conference. We've got a pretty awesome atmosphere. And uh, like I said, there's plenty on the line for both of these squads in this one. Yeah, absolutely. This is a mid-season heavyweight battle. It's the same time, if you remember a year ago, we had a game like this, Crestview versus Madison. Yes, sir. That, you know, one heck of a game so good that we put it on our Christmas marathon. But this is another test for Crestview. They had one at Crawford, came away with the buzzer being victory. They're still 10-0. They're looking to break into the top 10 after the first, you know, AP poll has them 13th. And a, a win against this Flyers squad could help them get there, but... St. Paul, they're starting to get that footing back from a few years ago when they seem to be going to districts year in and year out. Yeah, this is a team also very highly rated, of course, within their district in Division Four. We'll tell you a bit more about the St. Paul Flyers, winners of seven straight after an opening night loss to Margareta, a very good team who yes. I think just has one loss themselves. They beat Willard. They play suffocating defense and holding half their opponents so far this season, Trav, to under 40 points. That's a winning formula, my guy. Absolutely. If you can hold anybody under 50, it, you're going to at least have a shot no matter how your offense is. But this offense is good enough to get between 50 and 60 a night. So that's good enough for 7-1. and one, And that's good enough for number one in the first D4 Willard District RPI ratings. The new ratings coming out for Max Preps and the OHSA. They are on top ahead of Lucas, another really good squad. And you got to think, if they can stay one, Lucas two, they want to avoid each other. So that's a good spot where they want to be. And a win against Crestview will just boost that profile. No question about it. The new RPI ratings only factor in your opponent's record. So 10-0, baby. Yeah. That speaks. This would be a ginormous victory here on the road for the Flyers. If they are going to get it done, we believe that Nolan McCall is going to have to have an outstanding game. He's athletic, lanky. His numbers that you see here in their last game against Vermillion showcases that versatility. Mm -hmm. He's not just a weapon on the offensive end. He cleans the glass. And, oh, by the way, if you drive it in the lane, good luck getting up a shot if full 21 is waiting on you at the other end. I wish we had four spots 
for our statistics because he had two slam dunks yes, as sir. well against Vermillion. As you see, one of those right there on the picture of him. But he is one of the key factors for this St. Paul squad tonight because on the other end, you got a very balanced Crestview basketball team. Yeah, no question. They'll have to deal with McCall, but Crestview, as you mentioned, you know, they followed up the historic season from a year ago with quite an encore so far. 10-0, and though the Cougars too can defend, this is a very high-powered offense. 75-plus game uh, points in six of their 10 outings so far. Yeah, and uh, we were just talking to a, a fellow uh, colleague at BCSN. It's here. He used to be a coach for St. Paul, but he said, Am I right? Did they score 104 against Ontario? Yes, they absolutely did. This Facts. team, uh, they're playing on a chip on their shoulder. They lost to Huron in the district sem semis last year after a slow start, tried coming back, couldn't. But they know they have so many players back that they want to make a run, and they want to run at Margareta, who is the number one team in D3 Norwalk District RPI ratings. They can stay at two. Like we said with St. Paul, a win over a 7-1 and one team, it's just going to help them. And our new intern, Emma Bell, she had an opportunity to talk to head coach John Kurtz of the Cougars. Here's more on Crestview with Emma. At Crestview's team, they work really hard on and off. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I talked to Crestview coach, Coach Kurtz, a few minutes ago, and I asked him what um, what his team possesses over St. Paul. He said that Crestview's team, they work really hard on and off the court. They're dedicated to academics and on the court. They bond really well together. It should be an interesting game tonight and also a very good game to watch. Now back to you guys. All right, appreciate it, Emma. And part of that camaraderie that they've been able to build, I think, is just the hard work of that guy at the front of the line there, number 10, Justice Thompson. He is a true triple threat, excellent ball handler. He can have the skill set to both defend and shoot from long range. So he's an evolving playmaker too, almost three assists per game. So this is a guy that if you don't defend well against him, could be a long night. He's been putting up monster numbers in his junior campaign. And not only in the paint, but outside of the paint, 78 to 126 from inside the arc, but outside 17 of 54. So it, it's a good three point shooting percentage. But that means you have to guard him right as he crosses half court because he can be so dynamic to get, you know, to shoot it from anywhere on the court. And I was down on the floor watching some of their pregame warm up at halftime of the junior varsity game. And I noticed this team. They've really grown in terms of actual physical size from last year to this year. Justice especially, I think he was standing at about six foot two a season ago. He's very likably taller, about six foot four. And you look that he's not head and shoulders above everybody else. This is a very lanky, rangy Crestview team. They're going to give you a lot of problems with their versatility all over the floor with their size. Yeah, and they're battle tested uh, of their roster. Only two sophomores on the squad. The rest, you have three juniors and five seniors so this team like I said battles tested and they want to do more this season I'd like to invite everybody out there now if you're able to please rise off of your couches your recliners unless you're driving wherever you're at <laughs> if you can stand and drive at the same time I guess you're a very powerful awesome person make it happen but we've got a student coming out here first, I guess, that's going to deliver a message before we get to our national anthem. This is something new that the OHSAA is bringing to the table. I also want to remind you that by attending this event, you have a responsibility to represent your school and community in a positive and supportive manner. Everyone's goal today is to win. But high school sports are educational in nature and teach participants lessons they can use for a lifetime. So let's respect the officials, coaches, participants, administrators, authority figures, and our fellow fans. Don't forget to make today's game for the students participating. It's not a place where insulting or unsportsmanlike language is tolerated. The game same goes for the student sections. And parents, be a parent of which your student can be proud. Again, thanks for being here. And remember to respect the game. Very well said by that Crestview student delivering the OHSA message. And now, a message from the United States of America, the greatest country in the history of civilization. 
Let's get ready for high school basketball action with the playing of our national anthem. It's now showtime here inside of the Cougars' den. The last two undefeateds in Fireland's Conference play about to go head-to-head -to -head tonight. What's going to determine the outcome? Let's dive into our keys to victory. First, for St. Paul, you got to fly under the radar. What does that mean, Travis? Well, you got to keep it low scoring. String out some possessions, I think. Talking to Coach Kurtz before the game, he felt like the teams that they've gone against that really drag things out offensively have had a better chance to knock them off so far this season. Yeah, and just play with that defensive output, but mind balance. You know Crestview has a balanced attack. They had four guys with over 21 points against Ontario. You know they could anybody can score at any given time. You gotta have balance, you have to cancel that out and then play the defense like you said for that under the radar game. And our keys to victory presented by Scout Construction LLC for the Cougars. I'm going with the three ring circus. It's got multiple meanings here tonight. I think that both ringlers need to complement Justice Thompson with some scoring averages above double figures tonight. Also, I think at least 21 points off of three pointers for them. That would be seven total makes or more if they could do that they are going to leave here tonight with big smiles on their faces at 11-0. And mine, justice for all. Justice Thompson, one of the main guys that gets you here, kind of goes into the America whole theme that we have, but justice for all. Run through him, play your game. If they have to double justice, it's even going to be better because it's going to open up one of the other shooters and give them a chance to make their mark on this big game here midway through the season. Take a look at the starting lineups for tonight. You see both Ringlers, of course, for Crestview, along with Bruner, Justice Thompson, and Sam Wells, a very veteran bunch. On the other side, we've got Kirk, Hauk, Frazy, McCall, and Wangler rounding out the starting five for St. Paul. So two very athletic starting fives here tonight. Looking forward to seeing how they match up with one another. Yeah, absolutely. Crestview, they're a team 33% from beyond the arc, 59.6. That's just unheard of. That means this team gets to the glass. They get those high percentage shots inside, and they get them to fall. And uh, uh, threes, Bruner with 11, Thompson with 17, Wells with 19. And then you have Ringler who's almost got 50 twos. Thompson with 78, Wrangler with 38. You have so many players here that can put up numbers, and that's going to be what St. Paul needs to do is just they got to lock a few of them down. You're not going to be able to contain all these scores, but at least try and play with them. Every coach has different philosophies about what to do with amazing players like Justice Thompson on the defensive end try to take the ball out of their hands or let them carry the bulk majority of the workload and not let some of the other pieces start filling themselves getting involved. So we'll find out here shortly what St. Paul, Steve Miner and company have in mind tonight. As the student section 
bouncing around here in the Cougars' den as they will tap it back and they will begin with the rock here. It's Tyson Ringler giving it off for Justice. St. Paul looking to be a man-to-man -man defense here to start things off. I've been waiting for this game all week. This is, I think this is going to be a good one. It certainly was a season ago. And this rivalry has gone back and forth. Crestview has won the last six matchups, looking to make it the longest winning streak they've ever had here in this head-to-head -head with oh, the victory wow. here tonight. And that's just a smooth operator down the lane. Justice with the scoop. I mean, it doesn't matter how much of a space he has. He just threaded the needle and then laid it easily in. But right on the other end, great answer. That's Wangler, the six-foot senior. A little step through and a left-hand kiss off the square, evening things up here at two each. As Wrangler looking to drive, spins and sets it up. Crestview, a little bit out of sorts there. Two players in the same spot. Something, so, something at Crestview's been able to do a lot this season is drive to the bucket like we saw at Thompson. About 75% of those points against Ontario were layups. They are a good team of getting quick passes, getting the open guy, and taking it to the hole. Speaking of which, how about this? A little opening, and Sam Wells able to take a right-handed drive all the way to the rack. I guess asking you shall receive for me right there. Three shots all bucket so far in the early portion of this contest. As that one flies in a little bit too firm, Michael Kirk with the air ball. I'm watching this matchup, McCall, he's getting guarded by Tyson Ringler, and most of these players are switching off of these picks. He is not. He's fighting through there, so that's your one-on-one -on -one to watch for tonight. Thompson, fortunate, the ball slipped out of his hands, right into the hands of a teammate, and Wells tiles it up from long range. Great start for Crestview, doing what they've been doing all season. 5-0 solo run here for Sam Wells. St. Paul looking for a response. Instead, it's going to be Wells. Thought he was going to tip it out in front to himself. Recollected here by the Flyers. But right through the hands of Frazee out of bounds and a giveaway here for St. Paul. Take a look at our first Sutton Bank replay of the night. Just nothing but nylon for that three for Sam Wells. He's been a pretty solid shooter so far this season, as anticipated. Now in a senior campaign. That's his 20th make from long range in only 24 shots. Come on, that baby. That is money. Hesitation for Ringler, little jump stop, has to kick it back out for Justice. Matched up here one-on-one -on -one with Hauk, and he goes around him, oh. tough shot up and under. That would have been a play of the week nominee if he would have hit that. Backdoor back cut for Wells! Woo. Seven straight points for Sam. I mean, my goodness, any of these players, I'm so impressed at the way offensively Crestview's been able to, to work so far. And that's what makes them so hard. The guard is, you got four or five guys that's fearless that can take it to the bucket, or as we saw with Mr. Wells, he can pull it from beyond the arc. Off the drive, help side defense and it affects the shot here, too hard off the square. Running back the other way, Justice leaves it off. Great catch, the spin, but the shot's off target for Tyson Ringler. He recovers, though, to intercept it on the flyer, fast break. Oh. Back-to-back -back turnovers as the Cougars dish it right back over to the Flyers, looking to end a 7-0 run here by Crestview. Yeah, even though it seems like it's all crusty here, one bucket from St. Paul gets him right back into that momentum. Not going to happen here, though. Dylan Bruner with the block shot. Justice on the leak out. Timeout taken by St. Paul. Steve Miner seen enough. Nine straight here for the Cougs, and doing it in a variety of different methods. Yeah. They've slowed it down. You've seen a couple backdoor cuts. You've seen straight off the dribble takes to the hole. You've seen a three. And now you're seeing in transition something looking like uh, off the football field right up the hill here. Home run. Hail Mary pass. Touchdown. Two points. 11-2 lead for Crestview. Uh, I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better start for Coach Kurtz's squad. 
every home and kitchen supply timeout. We will dive into the comment section and see what you guys are chattering about out there. We'll begin in Facebook land. David cheering on the Cougars here tonight. Says go Cougs, stay undefeated in the Firelands Conference. Slice and dice those Flyers, number 10. Been doing so far. Kathy says go Crestview Cougars. So does Ron and Tim. Pam also cheered on the Cougars. So is our longtime fan, Daniel Stotts. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Looking for our first comment still to flow in from the YouTube side of things. So make your voice heard. Give us a shout out and we will shout you out every shout time out. out. Already 150 you watching, so you got to get those comments in there, folks, both on YouTube and Facebook combined. St. Paul winners of seven consecutive games off to a slow start here tonight. Hit their first shot attempt. It's been all Crestview since. Having trouble just initiating the offense, and they'll give it away again. Traveling violation called on Kirk, his second turnover. Yeah, you hate to see that. Just those unforced errors. Uh, it seems like, you know, St. Paul trying to press the issue a little bit too much. You can't get that 10-point bucket on once you have to calm down, get a bucket, get a stop, get a bucket, something that Coach Baylog always says. You know, it, it, it takes a little bit of time, but you can get back into this. Ringler taking his time, allowing things to set up. Through the wing, they'll initiate the offense now with Carter Goon, the first player off the bench. Carter's role expected to be expanded now with Malachi Spore out for the season. Unfortunate news yeah. coming in. Knee injury. I believe it's an ACL tear, and he is going to be done. So look for this sophomore to get plenty of playing time. Yeah, it hurts on most squads. That doesn't hurt, though. What a Woo. pretty rainbow and a pot of gold at the other end. You hate to see injuries like that, especially on special teams like this. But with the amount of players that can play for Coach Kurtz's squad, this may be the lone season that it, it stinks that he's not playing, but they have players that will make up for it. Another air ball, this time from Corey Frazee. Crestview with the three on Ooh. one. Wells took it to the rack, missed it. Short corner, and he knocks it down. Love the hustle from Wells. He deflected the three-point shot, immediately took off, got the ball, missed the shot. Instead of getting down on himself, reestablishes himself and hits the nice floater. Here's McCall, has to kick it out. Off the dribble drive, tough shot up and under there for Corey Frazee. And Ringler still causing problems for McCoy here on the defensive end, and there's Justice Thompson doing Justice Thompson stuff. What a st 18-2. Could be blowout city here tonight, folks. St. Paul needs to end the drought. A lot of contact. No whistle came as that shot well off target from Evan Wengler. Got the only point so far for St. Paul. In and out off the rim that time for Justice Thompson. Final 80 seconds here oh, in quarter man. number one. What a read by Tyson. Look at uh -oh. the speed. Going coast to coast and oh, rips it out. Oh, man. oh, my. Saves it back in bounds. A big break here for St. Paul to Hauk. He domineers down Offensive the lane. Foul. But we're heading back the other way as Tyson Ringler stood in and drew the charge. Man, he bobbled that ball on, the, on one end. That's what threw off the dunk attempt. Couldn't get the finish, but... Wrangler, who's been playing amazing defense so far, gets back and takes the charge for the change of possession here with a minute left in the first. 16-point cushion already for the Cougars. Make it 18. How about the soft kiss off the backboard for Jarek? With a sweet kiss. 18-point game. Wow. First points of the night for Jarek Ringler. And another offensive foul. Hauk assessed with his second in the last minute. Yeah, just he had the spot and might have aided in that call with a little bit of the fall. But, hey, you get the rest to call it, good job. So Brock Hauk called for an offensive foul against both Wranglers now. Thompson goes baseline, picks up his bounce. Jarek lines it up from downtown. Not this time, but a loose ball foul. 
going against the Cougars here in Dylan Bruner. Yeah, you take a look at the rebound. He kind of tried to – he went through the St. Paul player to try and deflect it. First foul called against the Cougars here tonight. The lone blemish on this first quarter for them so far. Great no-look feed in traffic, and finally St. Paul ends the drought. It's Wengler again. He's got all four. Final shot coming here for the Cougars. And this is where Justice Thompson really shines. End of quarter situations. He's hit many buzzer beaters this year. No way. No Line way. Up again. Big lead here for Crestview Jeez. as we head to quarter number two in the den. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Hi, I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Impressive opening quarter for the Crestview Cougars here at home. A rivalry matchup and showing that they are up for the challenge. 22-4 is the count. They're on top of St. Paul, who's got the basketball to open up quarter number two. But boy, what a first quarter for the combination of Justice Thompson and Sam Wells. 20 combined points and a little bit of defense coming here at the other end. The second block shot for the Cougars. This time it's Carter Goon. And if Emma, our statistician, was right, nine turnovers, Oof. two of them caused by charges, which is even better. However, Crestview gets one turnover themselves. Bocock couldn't finish it off. Neither can McCall. So it's two shots coming up empty-handed. And a wide open look for Goon. Almost splashed it. And a loose ball foul is going to go against Crestview. And Coach not happy with St. Paul right now. Yelling at his players, just take the layup on the other end. Get the free points. They were unable to hit that. It's going to be the first foul against Tyson Ringler. Offense has been a challenge, to say the least, so far for the Flyers. And I, I, I talked to the pregame, minutes, yeah. though, of just about the length. I think that's so noticeable here in the early going mm -hmm. that these undersized guards for St. Paul, they're going up against 6'3", six, 6'2", six, across the board. Very big challenge for them tonight. Yeah, it's all across the board, too. Normally in D3, D4, you'll see maybe two or three players, but this this squad is just, I, they're a bunch of Redwoods out there. I mean, Justice Thompson, we were talking before the game, he has grown so much throughout the summer. Not only like muscular, but he's ha hit his growth spurt, and it's just, it's showing. It's going to be the second foul in the corner against Jarek as he had to go up and over the defender. And Thompson, that's clearly within his range. Almost hit the mark with that. But a bit of a slow start here for both teams offensively. No mm -hmm. points in the first 90 seconds. Well, as I was going to say, St. Paul, they had about a, what, a six and a half, seven minute drought in that first quarter. They hit a bucket, their first bucket, and then the last bucket of the quarter. Between that, nothing doing just because the length, the size of Crestview, and they, they're just not hitting some inside shots as well. Ill-advised pass that time. Easily intercepted by the Cougars. No end one opportunity, but Jarek Ringler heading to the free throw line. The first trip for either unit to the charity stripe tonight. And St. Paul, Crestview spreading St. Paul out offensively so much that they're able to just get that drive right off. So the speed is a factor as well because they have that first step that allows them, you know, to really get ahead of their defender and take it to the hole. Ringler goes two for two. Entered tonight 29 of 38 from the free throw line. 
Average going up there with a couple of makes. As we've got oh. our largest lead of 20. Thompson with a clean interception. He coasts in for the left-handed layup. Dude's already got a baker's dozen. And a timeout for St. Paul. I mean, it looked, again, looked like you're on the football field. Just read the quarterback's eyes, picked it off, and took it back for two points. And uh, just things getting worse for the Flyers of St. Paul. I'm trying to find some good things to say about them, but it's just it's quicksand. Everything just keeps getting worse. They're trying to fight. They're trying to fight, but they're just sinking further and further. Now they're down 22. And you look at the schedule so far for St. Paul. Margareta far and away the top team that's been on their schedule. Beat them by 20-plus. Coming into the Cougars' den, hostile territory against one of the best teams in Division Three, And St. Paul may have met their match here tonight as we'll dive quickly back into the comment section. See David saying, awesome, Cougs, way to play, team ball. Love the charges. Keep it up. Got a defensive fan out there. Everybody loves a good charge every once in a while. It means the, uh, the player's able to risk his own body to get that ball back. Good look inside as Wengler continues to put the only points on the board for St. Paul. Yeah, the lone bright spot so far. He's able to get to the bucket. He's able to finish. But right now the lone player that's able to do so. Here's Carter Goon, the sophomore, directing traffic. Another youngster into the game, Daniel Wells, for the first time this evening. So a bit of a different lineup here for Coach Kurtz, who they've only gone about six, seven deep throughout the season. Not a very deep bench, because the starting five is just so gifted as like that? well. Yes, sir. He's into double figures. Referee has a shoe tying timeout. I thought he was going to go yell at somebody, but no, he just went over to tie the shoes. We'll take a look at the replay. Just the help side just wasn't there. So he was able to split the front of that zone and go right to the hole. Wells has 11 13 so far for Justice Thompson. And Wengler all six thus far for the Flyers. Trying to find a spark here offensively. Floater in the lane off target. Wells with the rebound, shoots it out. Justice sails in. And I just think he's got such good acceleration oh, yeah. and an understanding of when to take off. It looks like mm -hmm. he's cherry picking, but he's just picking the right moment to, to move. No, it's, it's, if he was playing soccer, he'd be on sides because he's starting with the defender and then taking off. It's just, like you said, the speed, he's just fast enough to get ahead and get the bucket. McCall, our player spotlight, only a second shot. Thompson again, you see the speed there running. The break, Ooh. a big block shot at the 10. That's something we knew Nolan could do. Six foot six in the lanky arms. Yeah, it looked like a great transition possession and he, maybe that fires him up as he hits the three on the other end after the block. Huge play at both ends for Nolan McCall. The SWAT, the trifecta, and a timeout taken by the Cougars. Take a look at the SWAT first. Pow. And then the three. And you're absolutely right. Sometimes it's a defensive play that can get you going offensively and vice versa. Sometimes you see the basketball go in and you'll get all juiced up at the other end of the floor. So Coach Kurtz recognizing that, that it was a big potential mm -hmm. momentum shift, pulling the trigger on a timeout. I mean, this is one of the best to do it since he's reclaimed the throne here for Crestview. 60 and 21 since 2020, a school record 21 wins last year and 14 and 0 in the Firelands Conference, their first league title since a long time ago. Yeah, it, it's been quite a while. Uh, let's see, it was 2020. I can't see because the Raptors actually what that number is, but you see, I see 1966, 67. Like it was back, I think it was what the early 80s, late 70s that they won it. So they did that. But what was it, a 15, 16 and 0 start as well? They finished with two losses overall. They lost to Ontario and then another game towards the end of the season. But a great start for them trying to match it again. But they're, they're looking really good right now. Cougars lead it by 21. 
And a lot of young players out on the floor right now. Here's Joe Kosowski. Excuse me, that was Carter Goon. Dialing up a three. And back iron for Bruner. And the long rebound into the hands there for Wengler. And I saw this a couple nights ago, Mount Gilead Danville girls. Mount Gilead had a 24-9 lead. But Danville just went on a run, controlled the game the rest of the way, and pulled out the victory. Can we see this here with St. Paul? You can't really back down if you're Crestview. That's why I think Coach Kurtz took that timeout after a 5-0 run because St. Paul's 7-1 for a reason. They can go on a run. They can get back in this. They can cut this to maybe 15, 14 points by the half. They might have something. But that's something they're going to have to stop if they want to do so. Sick finishing ability on display there for Dylan Bruner. Let's see that one again here on the Sutton Bank replay. I mean, nice hang time. And that's how you get away from a six foot six Nolan McCall. You got to go up and under and use the backboard as your friend. But we've seen multiple Cougars do that up and under as well. Something they practice, and that's a that's a pivotal move you can use along the baseline, especially when you're down there with a couple of guys getting that extra step in the up and under. It's a very good move for an offensive squad like this. Catch and shoot from the corner, and we've seen a ton of air ball so far for St. Paul. The length of Crestview. Absolutely. Getting out, giving them problems, and at the other end, kaboom for Ringler. Yep, that length has just been too much for this undersized St. Paul squad so far. Even McCall, who taller than most on here, he's been struggling as well. It's another defensive rebound and another three-pointer almost hit its mark. Jarek working inside, second opportunity, though. Just off target. Seems like even every miss from beyond the arc for Crestview has gone down and come back up. Back iron, McCall collects his own miss. And they'll Extra get a clean pass. look, long range for Freeze. Oh. That one ribs out. Third look, and two free throws in the future here for Nolan McCall. He would have loved to finish that one off, but at least he'll have a chance at two free throws here. And it just seems like St. Paul just a bit off. You've seen with those, those three-pointers because of the length, air balls off the mark, and then even inside, they're just so physical, it, it causes some problems. Thompson, a nice long break, checking back into the mix. Bruner takes a seat. As we're sub two minutes remaining here before the break, Cougars with a 35-11 lead on our Simonson Construction Services scoreboard. Celebrating 50 years. Yeah, big shout out to them. Awesome projects all around North Central Ohio and beyond. As well as scout construction too. Look at the step by Wells. He's gonna head to the free throw line. But just that quick first step almost like disappears. And then the hesitation too, the couple fakes there, getting the defender up and drawing the foul. This is a position Wells hasn't been in very often this season. Just his 10th attempt right there, but shooting 80% on the year. I mean, this may be a little bit, oh, a little bit overblown, but the only other time this year I've seen a team Dominate another team that's good like St. Paul, something like that. Loudonville girls. The Loudonville girls basketball team playing teams with one and two losses and just running them off the court. I, I mean, that's the closest I can compare to them is this Cougar squad so far today. Now, they don't have a player of the year possibly candidate yet, but you never know. Justin Thom Justice Thompson is for sure putting up numbers like that right now. Another look on the Sutton Bank replay of Wells' last up and under attempt. As St. Paul well into double digits now in terms of the turnovers. Cougars looking to capitalize. Final minute of action. Wells to the bottom of the rim, recollects, kicks it out. And a rebound here for McCall. He's going to push the pace. Drawing a couple defenders, still able to bounce into the middle of the lane but swiped away from Sam. Rockets it deep like Joe no way. Flacco, oh. but no completion. Oh, man, that would have been nuts if he would have hit that. 
fast, active hands poked away. Justice again, that's the third time tonight we've seen him just get ahead of the pack. He just wants it more. He missed the shot. He's like, I'm going to get it right back because I want to score. That's going to be back to court. So here's that replay of the steal. They get a chance to make this a 30-point game at the break. Crestview's just playing on another level, and you know exactly where they're going to go with the basketball here to close out the frame. I actually don't know because they have so many guys that's been scoring tonight. But, yeah, Thompson most likely. Oh, they traveled, though. And not that Jarek's not totally capable, of course, of making something happen. But Justice Thompson, he's just one of those guys at the end of the quarter, he's got a nose for the basket. Yeah. St. Paul, though, gotta now put it up. with the last chance. And it's going to come up just a little bit short for Bocock as we've got two quarters in the books. Unbelievable performance by the 10-0 Cougars here at home, showcasing why they're one of the top teams in Division Three in the entire state of Ohio. Keep it with us for the Scout Construction Halftime Report. That's on the way with Emma Bell. Plus, we'll get you all set for quarter number three. You're watching live and free boys high school hoops exclusively on the OH Report. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Tonight's Firelands Conference Boys Action brought to you live and free right here on the OH Report thanks to our generous sponsors. Simonson Construction Services Incorporated. From concept to completion, we can help you make a plan, refine your vision, and build a path for success. Mechanics Bank, Richland County's only independent community bank. Sutton Bank, earn the cash reward of your choice for doing simple activities with Casasa. Scout Construction Services, LLC. With more than a decade of business, you can trust Scout Construction with your roofing and siding needs. Call Scout Construction for more information at 419-989-7240. Once again, that's 419-989-7240. And Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchens and baths, windows and doors since 1970. After the break, we'll be back with the Scout Construction LLC Halftime Report right here live and free on the OH Report.
guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Hi, I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. It's halftime here inside of the Cougars Den. Two quarters in the books, and Crestview running away with things. 39-11, they lead St. Paul here at the break of this Fireland Conference showdown between the last two undefeateds in the league. And so far, it has been all Cougars. I'm Brian Skronsky, Emma Bell joining me here for the halftime report. And you talked to Coach Kurtz before the game. He talked about the togetherness that this team has showed all season long, both on and off the court. What did you see there through the first couple of quarters that lets you know coach knows what he's talking about in this team? They definitely play as one. Yeah, most definitely. Um, they had very little turnovers in the first half. They work together very well. Um, they take their time. They know where they're going to go. They know what they're doing. They slow it down when they need to slow it down. Um, <laughs> they've had two. They've had 13 twos um, compared to St. Paul, who's only had three. St. Paul is not doing very well with turnovers. Um, 15 turnovers, and Crestview's only had five. So you can tell Crestview is not as sloppy as St. Paul. St. Paul kind of came out looking a little sluggish at the beginning, just my opinion. <laughs> and the score also kind of shows that as it's 39 to 11. But Yeah, the Flyers, it didn't seem like they had the motor running off the butt getting off the bus. However, I think Crestview in their length defensively, it's really created complications for St. Paul on offense. Just getting the ball inside or to their spots looks like it's problematic. Uh, yeah, most definitely. Crestview's also had 17 rebounds and St. Paul's only had 10. They're out rebounding St. Paul by a lot. They're going after everything that they can find. St. Paul is just moving a little slow, like you said, so. It feels like Crestview playing here at home. They've got the 10 and 0 mark. Felt like they had something to prove here in this game. Both of these teams 5-0 and in the league and kind of wanted to show their superiority, and so far, so yeah. good. So good, yeah. Crestview definitely showed up tonight. <laughs> they want to keep that undefeated streak, so good job to them. Hopefully the second half they can show us some more. That's right, Cougars fans. It's been an excellent start for you guys, and we'll see if it keeps up here in quarter number three. We're going to take one more commercial timeout. We are going to be right back. Second half action on the way from the Cougar Den. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. You see how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Hi, I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report.
Thursday night high school hoops and we've got a monster here inside of the Cougars Den. Two teams undefeated in conference play battling it out here tonight to see who's number one in the Firelands. I am Brian Skrowski. Travis Brardy is with me on the call here tonight and Crestview what an unbelievable start for them. 39 points in the first couple of quarters and They've showcased on both ends of the floor that this is not just an explosive offensive team that averages over 73 points per game. Defensively, too, only giving up about 50 per contest. And they're looking to have arguably their best defensive performance of the season here tonight. Though Dylan Bruner, the senior, turns it over here for the Cougars to start things off in the third. Yeah, you just look at the score by quarter. It was a great start for Crestview, 22-4 in the first quarter. And then even though they slowed down offensively, they still outscored St. Paul 17-7 in the second. Uh, they just, you ought, you ought to think they can do that one more time. One more quarter, it's the knockout blow, and they could be able to cruise here. But if you can get a strong, a fast start by St. Paul like that bucket, they may be able to crawl back in, but it's going to take a lot to do so. It'd have to be a monster third quarter for the Flyers to get back within striking distance. Evan Wengler, though, enjoying a nice offensive night. He's almost in double figures, eight points to lead the way. Got to get a bunch of stops, though. They get a second one in a row here, and this is exactly what you need. Baylog says it all the time, a stop, a score, and a stop. They got it. Can they keep the juices flowing? We'll see here with an offensive rebound. They're going to have to start making these threes, though, because... An offensive rebound, though, that helps, but uh, a bunch of twos, that's going to help. It's just going to, it takes a little bit longer, and I don't think they're going to be able to do so unless they get hot from beyond the arc, like Crestview. That's Dylan Bruner lining it up from long range. His first trifecta of the night puts him at five points. And just when St. Paul starts to get their footing, Crestview comes right back down, takes some of that away. Counter blow for the Cougars. St. Paul. Enjoying a few offensive rebounds on the last possession, and they'll give it away here. Moving screen against Wangler. But a second look on the Sutton Bank replay from the sharpshooter, Dylan Bruner. And like I even said in the first half, some of those misses from three were rattling around the hoop and bounced out. They are accurate tonight. It's just unlucky in some, on some of these shots. This honestly could be already a 35-40 point game if some of those buckets fall. Look at Wells inside, using his frame, going straight up. 5-0 run now for Crestview. Wells, 15th point of the night. Him and Thompson really showing off here, I guess as usual, for the Cougars. Great Ooh. take, but an even better defensive effort by Bruner. Looking like LeBron against Golden State. Right in front of the student section, Wells keeps them on their feet. Crestview with a great stretch here, eight straight points. Wells congratulating his teammate for the block, giving him the three-pointer. Now here's Thompson, sky into the second story for the board, going end to end. Contested shot and a little bit wild as he was moving fierce through the paint. And now McCall thought better of a triple try. Wengler to work. Series of moves and gets cut off by Wells. He kind of over spun there. He had a chance at the bucket, but instead turned right into the defender. Thompson, rhythm three. Over the top of the backboard and out of bounds. Crestview, though, enjoying their largest lead of the night. As we take a second look at the SWAT coming over from the weak side there for Bruner. Yeah, that was worth a second, a second look at it. Skip pass, opposite side for Kirk. Now back here, a couple of screens, setting up Frazee. Baseline drive and a pretty finish. That's a nice floater there. Those weren't falling in the first half. Gets that confidence up a little bit. Got a block on the other end too. And the second shot impacted as well as Thompson misses both. McCall going coast to coast, count it. And that is the McCall 
that St. Paul is used to seeing, making a couple blocks on one end, just taking it himself for the hoop and the harm. The six foot six junior was our player spotlight this evening. Has not been able to get it going offensively. Five points, chance to make it six here at the free throw line. And the lefty pure. Trims the deficit down to 27. So a lot of work still to be done here for St. Paul Crestview. Held scoreless on their last possession. A couple of blocks, of course, by McCall. Have we had back-to-back -back possessions without a bucket for Crestview yet tonight? Maybe once. I don't once. think so. I am so sorry for that jinx, Crestview fans. So sorry. Flyers fans hoping they can capitalize. Frazy, though, he's just been a fraction off. Certainly from long range. Ofer from beyond the arc tonight. Possession stays at this end here with the Flyers. And Coach Miner wants to draw things up. You see on the home and kitchen supply scoreboard, 9-8 so far this quarter. Unfortunately, when you're down by the margin that they were at the break, not going to get it done. Got to go on a big run here. Yeah, Crest, Coach Kurtz, he's happy with this. Okay, we're down one in the quarter, but we were up 28 going into this. Trading buckets, hey, that's fine. We're still, you do that the rest of the way, we're still going to win by 25 to 28 points. But St. Paul, they're going to have to get a couple possessions together to get hoops. Hi, Bryce Coder. How are you doing, buddy? Bryce in the comment section rooting I, for Travis sure. tonight. Why not? Tracy Cunningham cheering on the Cougars. I'm actually jealous of Bryce. The basketball that he's seen in Northern Columbus this year, it's just been some phenomenal basketball down that way. Yeah, shout out to Bryce Coder doing some nice work for us at Big Walnut along with Westerville North as this off the shoelaces tops in. Turned away, but it stays in bounds for Jarek. And now Crestview's going to reset as they come back up top. We were looking at the RPI when it first came out in Westerville North. Top five team as well. Big Walnut up there. Olin Tangy Orange, a team we've seen, number two. Cougars looking to showcase that they are number one in their region. Another bucket here for Thompson. He's got 19. And if they are able to finish this off, not trying to jinx them, it's just going to get them so much closer to Margareta because you defeat a team with seven wins. The way the RPI is, it doesn't matter what division the team you're playing is anymore. It's just if you beat a team with seven wins, it's going to help you out. Wells actually smacked that right off the noggin of Wengler. Insult to injury with the giveaway. Ball movement. Whoops. Ends up on the floor, and Wells... Has to commit the foul going down to try to keep the possession alive into the legs of Bocock. Yeah, just a little bit out of sorts there. The pass was high, tried to get the touch back for the shot, and he was unable to handle it. Good job by St. Paul, too, to recover and get the loose ball. It's going to be the second foul on Sam Wells, second team foul against the Cougars here in the third. Hello to Jerry Webb on YouTube. What's up, Jerry? Our lone commenter, 101 of you watching on the YouTubes tonight. Last touch by the Cougars, unable to secure the defensive rebound. So the drive, the possession stays alive down at this end for St. Paul. Still at about 150 of you watching. Wonder how many people are scouting this Crestview squad and going, oh my goodness. Wengler dials it up. He's got a dozen so far. And Crestview, I've read about them. I've seen them on video in person as advertised. Though I told you pregame down on the floor, they're a little bit bigger and thicker mm -hmm. than I thought that they were going to be. Well, just watching them from last year, how the size that they were. They had a big lineman, a, an all-American lineman that really took things over underneath, but that was all they had. They were more of a finesse outside shooting squad. 
But then you look at this team, you're like, who are these guys? Where did they come from? And it's just, I think it was just motivation from last year's squad. They thought they could go further. They thought they could win a district championship. Uh, their first since 1965. Came up a little bit short, but instead of you know getting down on themselves, they got back into the weight room. They did summer workouts. They did summer basketball because they knew they had a really good opportunity to do some great things. And, I mean, it's been showing so far through ten and a half games. Whew. A little sizzle on that latest make for Jarek Ringler. And you and I just, when we saw the picture of the scoreboard after the Ontario game, we thought, is this, is this a mistake? Four guys with over 20 points? This is crazy. But you see how they're able to do it here with such a collection of talent mm -hmm. as McCall tips it in at the other end. And if you want to go up against a team like Margareta in a district, like Huron, you're going to need that balance because if you have four scores that can put up 20 points, it's hard to double team somebody there. You're going to have to play them straight up. Second made triple for Bruner tonight. He's getting closer to double figure scoring. As we're to the final 30 seconds here, quarter number three evaporating. And so are St. Paul's chances as they continue to be cold from the outside. Though they get a turnover here with Bocock keeping it inbounds. Yeah, the first time they were able to kind of cut down that transition. And it turns into points. Kirk Strong take down the lane. Back the other way inside. Tyson's going to be fouled with three ticks showing on the clock. And a chance to try to push this lead back out to 30 just in time for money time. And I was about to say a stop here. St. Paul ties Crestview in the quarter 15 all. But, but they're going to come up possibly 3.4 seconds short of that. Great student section on hand here tonight inside the Cougars' den. Toilet bowl goes. And we were talking before the game. They're usually on our side. But knowing that the OH report is here, they switch sides. And now they get to be shown sporting their American colors tonight. I don't know if that's why they switch, but we'll take the credit. I'm, I'm going to say yes. I mean, Makes sense. You know? Get a little bit more face time out there because we, we don't get to see much of the shenanigans, of course, when they're right in front of us here with our cameras. And so an doesn't excellent love some move. Shenanigans. shenanigans. Say it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Bocock, 3-4 dribbles, pulls up. Good if it goes, but it's short. As we head to the fourth and final frame, it's been all Cougars from the start. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. Hi, I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. We have reached money time here inside of the Cougars Den. Crestview looking to cash a big old first place check with a blowout victory over the rival St. Paul as they own a 56-26 cushion to open up the fourth. I'm Brian Skorotsky. Travis Brardy is with me here tonight. And there is no question this is a very motivated Crestview group that came out and with the sizzle they had in the pan right away, looking to put an exclamation mark behind a big win and I mean they are right on course to do just that and they're right on course to getting to their average of mid 70s basketball against a seven and one squad and I know Jake Furr is here he's an AP voter I hope some AP voters from around the state are watching this one because Crestview is better than their number 13 ranking shows 
and it's showing the night. Left-handed skip pass, opposite corner there for Justice. And look at Sam Welsh just taking his time. Quick first step, and then all the way to the rack. And this is no offense to, to Mr. Wells. He doesn't look like a guard that can take it to the hole like that, but he is. And, and he's travel. just, I mean, look at this. He, he looks like a, a your normal forward that he's good with a spot shot or whatever, but no, he will put it on the, on the ground. If nobody comes at him, he's just going to take it to the hole and score. And even if somebody steps in front of him, he has the moves to put it in. When you shoot the ball as well as Sam Wells done from beyond the arc so far this year, probably the most ridiculous number in the area, it allows you to be able to blow by defenders when you're shooting. I can't even process it. What's he, 20 of 24 on the year? I mean, that's like 88%? Yeah. yeah. Well, a little less. I, even more with what we're seeing tonight with him. But I know we normally don't do this at the MVP, but... I think it'd be good to talk to Coach Kurtz after the game just to talk about how dynamic this squad is. So we get a foul on the floor. And it looks like the night might be over for Sam Wells in the clubhouse with a game best 20 points. Justice Thompson as well has checked out. And this team, so good offensively, their leading scorer, two points here in the second half. They haven't needed them to come nope. out and fill it up. And they still outscored St. Paul 17-15 in the quarter. Again, that balance that they have. And I think these are some valuable minutes for Crestview to get some Absolutely. of these younger guys in here mm -hmm. because it's not that deep of a bench. This kid gets minutes all the time, Tyson Ringler, and now he's heading to the free throw line with a chance for That's an and one. That's a great seal. That, if, if you're a post player out there watching, you need to watch the replay of that over again. We'll show it after the shot, but he's able to get the defender on his back, seal him up, get the bucket, drop step, take it up strong, hoop in the harm. And we'll see it right here. Just watch. Has his defender sealed above him and just takes it up strong for the bucket. First foul against Evan Wengler. And the three-point play, old-fashioned style. Five points now for the junior. And actually, Thompson back out on the floor. Playing some help side D, affects the shot. But try, try again, does Jacob Bocock. That's a nice effort. Just continues with the momentum, gets it, reverse layup, puts it in. His first point of the night. Cougars exercising a little bit of patience here. As Ringler attacks from the free throw line, he's got back-to-back -back buckets. He now has seven points. Excellent Woo. take, other way, and quick answer here for St. Paul. And the last two going to Bocock. Yes, St. Paul not giving up here, down 33. But that last bucket did make it a 35-point game, so nonetheless, we have a running clock until St. Paul gets this to under 30, so they're going to need three more points to get this back to a normal clock. Thompson with a crossover. Oh, what a pass right on time in traffic. Oh, they're going to call a foul. It's going to be assessed to Wengler. So it'll be two shots coming up. Saw Ringler cap off a three-point play and make good on his previous free throw attempts. This is going to be a tough one tonight for MVP Ski. So much balance. Leave it up to you fans and you too, sir. Yeah, definitely hit us in the comment section. Let us know who you think should join myself for a conversation after the game. If I had a vote, I'd go with Mr. Wells. Sam Wells also would be my selection. He's just been so efficient. I feel like he's missed maybe two shots all game. And Sam's going to check back in. So his ears must have been burning. Feels like he's got to come out here and prove that he's been the best player on the floor tonight. I think he just wants to outscore Justice. He saw him back. I need to get back out there and keep my lead.
Final four minutes of regulation. Bocock has been the hot hand lately. Bruner got a piece of it. He's out in front. Good Ooh, looking move, but McCall recovers. Turns him away at the rim. Thompson, though, having an effect on that shot. Now here comes Justice, almost traveled with it. And if you think Crestview's going to slow things down from the pace they usually have with 3.30 left, nope. Now they do, but just not really in their DNA. Nope. Thompson against a oh double team. Come on, man. Just too physically gifted. Now Sam Wells going to call for the ball next possession. He's down a point now for team lead. So the new game within the game. <laughs> Thompson with a game high 21. Wells Great right move. on his heels. And all of a sudden, Bocock's got seven, all of them, here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and that's just a smooth crossover. Even better shot there, just off the dribble. Looking like Jimmy Chitwood out there, off the dribble. A little picket fence action. Uh-huh. Still a ginormous lead for the Cougars as we've got another home and kitchen supply timeout. We'll dive into the comments section, likely for the last time here tonight, so get them in while you can. I see some Sam Wells on here. Yes, a couple votes for Sam. Bella thinks Corey Frazee. Uh, Christy Stankovic rooting for the Cougars. Says Sam Wells, another vote for him. Mm -hmm. Justice. Sam and Justice, says Jerry. And someone asking out there, how do I get a girlfriend? Well, back in the day, we actually went out and talked to people. We didn't do these apps. Maybe try that. Talk to people. Talk to them. You know? I hear AI is getting really good at communicating, so maybe you can just create a girlfriend anymore. The new chat GPT seems like a good time. <laughs> no comment. Just trying to help no out. Comment. Yeah. Just. Another great take. Excellent kick uh. out. The shot a little bit short. Look at the effort. Insane hustle. You see these backup players. This, you know, this is prime time for them. They're going to go 100% out here, too. Try and impress Coach. Get some more playing time. And we'll get some free throws on the way here for Daniel Wells. He's had some varsity experience so far this season. But these are going to be his first varsity free throws. Welcome to the big league, son. Money. He is into the varsity record books. And a perfect 100%. I have, has anybody missed a free throw yet tonight? I don't think so. No, I think you're correct. Both squads have been perfect. Looking across the way, I see an attendance galleon head coach Tyler Sanders. He played under Coach Kirch and actually coached with him at Mansfield Christian. Had a great conversation with him last night on the coach's corner. Galleon, they're a squad that's turning around in the middle of the MOAC race, getting some big wins as well. Uh, I think an underdog team to watch for the rest of the way in the MOAC. Certainly no underdog in the Firelands this year. Nope. Crestview going to move to 6-0 and and winners of their last 20 league games. And the clock going to continue to funnel away as the differential over 30. Some of the St. Paul backups looking to get their name into the scoring column. That one rims out, though, for Landon Freese. And up over the back goes Brady Fritz. Looking ahead, Crestview against Coach Chris Sheldon at Western Reserve on Saturday, but then Tuesday at Madison. Madison's a good squad. They played Mansfield they Seniors. They played Mansfield Senior tough, I think. So you're not going to say it's not no. going to be like last year. It's not a good Madison team this year, unfortunately, from the people that I've talked to that cover the Rams. 
But how about that? The last shot of the game is good for Carter Goon, and that will close out a lopsided dominating victory here for the Cougars as they continue their undefeated run with a huge showing here inside of the Cougars' den. we still got more to come, though. You will hear from our most valuable player coming up after the break. Also, we'll have the final stats and perhaps an interview with the head coach of the Cougars, Mr. Kurtz. That's all on the way, live and free, right here on the OH Report. Guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Casasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Casasa. <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. Tonight's Firelands Conference Clash brought you live and free. On the OH Report, thanks to our generous sponsors, Simonson Construction Services Incorporated. From concept to completion, we can help you make a plan, refine your vision, and build a path for success. Mechanics Bank, Richland County's only independent community bank. Scout Construction Services, LLC. With more than a decade of business, you can trust Scout Construction. With your roofing and siding needs, call Scout Construction for more information at 419 989-7240. Once again, that is 419-989-7240. Sutton Bank. Earn the cash reward of your choice for doing simple activities with Casasa. And Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. When we come back, the Mechanics Bank MVP right here, live and free. We'll be right back. 
guarantee nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronsky, and let's make you a part of the game. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Hi, I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report. We are back now with the Mechanics Bank Most Valuable Player, Sam Wells with a big 20-point performance now worthy of being our MVP. And the whole team really played well right from the jump. This is supposedly the second best team in the Firelands. Felt like you guys wanted to come out and make a statement that there's a king, of course, in town and uh, you guys are it. Well, for us, you know, like you said, a statement game, but we always say in the locker room, it starts on defense. You have to choose to be intense. That's what we came out with. And I felt like your guys' length defensively really gave them a lot of problems. Has that been something that you've noticed in a lot of matchups so far this year? Because you go 6-2 or better at every position. We've learned it from our coach. He's taught us well through practice. Uh, it's every day that we work on it. And it's really, you know, come out well and it's shown. And coach told us before the game he felt like there was a togetherness with this group that you've really gelled on and off the court and that it showcases itself when you get out there. This is my first time seeing you in person. I thought that that was very evident. How would you describe just kind of the relationship and the bond that you have this group here? Uh, it's a brotherhood. You know, we've all been together for three or four years now. We know each other. Uh, you know, we just play like we're brothers. And then you specifically, last year I thought you were more of a spot shooter, you could do some things, but here tonight and earlier in some games, you really showcase you've got a great first burst and then you're a great finisher in the lane as well. How much do you feel like your game's evolved from your junior season to now in your final high school year? Well, it's my final year, so no holding back for me. You know, I'm not gonna leave anything else on the court. It's just all out. And uh, Justice Thompson ended up with 21 points. You had 20. Is that kind of a back and forth that you guys have had going this season? Who's going to be the top dog? No, I'm not going to take that. Um, I'm happy to give it to someone else. But, you know, we all work as a team here. So. All right, so still undefeated at this point in the season. You're at the same spot last year. In what ways do you feel like maybe this team is a step ahead of where you were during the 22-23 campaign? Well, we can't get ahead of ourselves, you know. We have to stay humble. But... We also have to stay confident, you know. We got our brothers and we're still going to play good. Well, congratulations. You get through the first half of the league unscathed, still perfect there. Big performance for you tonight. It's your opportunity to give some shout outs. Who do you want to give them to? Well, obviously my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, my teammate, my coaches, uh, my parents, you know, they're all helping me be here. All right, Sam Wells, your Mechanics Bank MVP, 20 points tonight and a big one over St. Paul. Instead of paying for some big name spokesperson, Kasasa Checking gives that money back to you in cash rewards. In fact, you just bought me this cup of coffee. See how that works? Amazing! Free checking, cash rewards. Take back banking with Kasasa. Hi, I'm Josh with Scout Construction, proud sponsor of local teams and athletes. Check out your favorite local sports right here on the OH Report.
Back here inside the Scout Construction LLC post-game show is Brian Skaronski. Actually, he has his guest ready, so we'll bring him in. You see him. It's head coach John Kurtz, so let's send it down to Brian. All right, I've got head coach of Crestview, John Kurtz, now with me. And job well done tonight, coach. I thought you came out with a lot of energy and effort right at the beginning of the game. You put them in a deep hole they couldn't undig themselves from, and you kept the pressure on the entire game. How satisfied are you with the overall performance from your squad tonight? Well, I thought our defense in the first quarter was really good, and that defense turned into transition buckets. And once we get rolling like that, it, it really can uh, – you can look at the scoreboard and see a lot of points going up there pretty quickly. Yeah, definitely the defense turned into a lot of offense. I thought you were dominant at both ends of the floor equally. Your length really stood out to me tonight. St. Paul might be a little bit undersized, but how much has that kind of carried you so far this season where you go 6'2", 6'3", 6'4", across the board? Yeah, those kids are big and they're, you know, they have long arms, and so we, we disrupt a lot of passes, and we don't give you very many clean looks at the rim. So, yeah, that size does make a difference. And, you know, there was a few times tonight we tried to put them in situations where we could take advantage of our size. You had a historic season last year out of the gates and then the most wins ever. Pretty good encore so far. In what ways do you feel like this team has evolved and has maybe taken up their game a notch? Well, I think we're more consistent than we were last year. There were times last year where I'd be like, you know, we're taking a few plays off and probably you heard me holler tonight. I didn't want us to take any plays off and that's been a real battle, but I think we're better at that. And I think the other thing, too, is we share the ball really well. I think we were at 21 assists tonight, and, and I think that's key to, you know, enough guys being able to get involved that you then become more involved on the defensive end. So still undefeated in the Firelands Conference here at the midway point. It seems like you guys are clearly kind of head and shoulders above the field. How do you go about not letting your team get complacent now that you've got everyone's best shot and you've already handled business one time? Well, all we have to tell our kids is we got to go to Western Saturday. So, you know, Western's a tough place to play, and, and they've always played well. And, you know, a few years ago they got us pretty good up there when they had that really good team. So, you know, we're just kind of looking forward to the next game. And, and, you know, our kids aren't really looking ahead. They've just kind of been good about, you know, we got to play Western next, and it's going to be a different kind of game. It's more guard-oriented. So, yeah, they, I think they've been pretty level-headed themselves. All right, Coach, congratulations on a big win tonight. We always let the student-athlete MVPs give shout-outs. You want to give any tonight? To my wife and my family that were all here tonight. Well done. All right, John Kurtz, head coach here for Crestview. Another big win for them. Throw it back up to Travis. Thank you, Brian, and thank you to head coach John Kurtz for joining Brian here for a little bit as we now take a look at the final statistics. Brought to you by Scout Construction as Brian joins me back here once again. But uh, what a performance by the Cougars tonight against a 7-1 squad. Dude's doing parkour up here to get back with us. But yeah. um, uh, just taking a look at the stats, completely dominated by Crestview. Crestview forces 19 turnovers. Rebounds were a little bit more even, but, you know, you get that when you get the second team and third team in there against the first team. It, it, it evens out. Uh, the most impressive stat, I think, both teams combined 14 to 14 from the charity strike. Absolutely. Yeah, you, you love seeing that as a coach. So that's a silver lining to take away here for the Flyers and certainly a feather in your cap if you're Crestview. Any time that you can get 20 made shots, though, in the two-point range, and we don't have the statistics specifically, but I believe all of those, with the exception of one that I can remember, were in the painted area. Yeah. So they were getting high percentage, very high percentage looks. I said in my pregame that I thought if they made seven or more threes that it was going to be a victorious night for them. They only needed six of them because defensively, as you heard from Coach Kurtz, that carried them. They got out of the gates so hot, played with so much energy and effort, almost forcing 20 turnovers. They were able to turn those into fast break points that I thought this was a dominant overall performance for Crestview. They showed it right from the beginning, and this was a perfect showcase here live and free of why this team is the top dogs or cats, if you will, in the Firelands Conference and uh, looking to remain undefeated when they go to Western Reserve on Saturday. And just a tough shooting night for St. Paul. 15-point advantage alone from three-pointers for the Cougars. They had six threes, only one from the Flyers. They had the shots, but just that length was too much. It threw them off, even threw them off on the inside until the second half when they were able to adjust a little bit. But then it was just too little, too late because this Cougar squad, they're balanced, they're bigger, 
They have a chip on their shoulder from last year, and they're like Coach said, they're taking it one game at a time. They're not sleeping on teams like Western Reserve or like, as you told me, Madison coming up as well. So if they can keep that mindset going into the tournament, continue on, they'll get a high seed, and some teams are going to want to avoid them because this team is complete. There's no question about it. And I, I'm going to leave you with two thoughts here for St. Paul, both on opposite sides of the fence. A, I feel like you got to take this game with a grain of salt because mm -hmm. I thought you made a decent comparison, Loudonville Lady Redbirds and how dominant they are. Yeah. You can't really look at the teams they play and say, oh man, they got blown out. This is not a good team. St. Paul, of course, is going to compete in Division Four in the tournament. They were ranked number one in their district coming in here tonight. That being said, you come out here and you play against probably the best team that's going to be on your schedule. One of only two teams, though, that really you would say are juggernauts, and you've got flat out blown out by both of them. So I think that there's a little cause for concern when you see that. I didn't think they competed very well here tonight. They looked shell-shocked right away, and yeah. they never rebounded at any point, minus a mini stretch in the third quarter. But B, it's just one game against a really good opponent. So prove that you can bounce back. You have some resiliency. Come back ready to do it again in your next game and get a win and uh, kind of change your own minds if you have any doubt that crept in with this big loss tonight. Yeah, and uh, they'll be taking the road, as you see, Coach Haverdale and the wrestling squad coming out. And uh, you guys were filming a wrestling show yourselves yes, today with Coach, with Mr. Tr that was Zach Truax for about five hours today. Homeboy gets riled up for wrestling more so than anybody I know. We've got lots of great action on the way. He's got an interview with Galleon's head coach. We also have a brand new segment, his favorite takedowns of the week. We had fan submissions for the top throws of the week and the best pins. Those are gonna be put up for a fan vote coming up tonight, but you gotta see the breakdown of the JC Gorman. It's the best coverage. Oh any yeah. outlet has probably ever done. Of one of the best tournaments in Ohio. So good, so many great wrestlers, and Zach Truax absolutely did it justice. So if you're a big fan of high school wrestling, 9.30 p.m., oh, it's your porcelain place to be. St. Paul, next up, they're trying to bounce back. They head to New London on Saturday at noon. That's a get while, right game. While the Cougars head to face the fighting Chris Sheldons at Western Reserve at 1.15 on Saturday. But let's get out of here, Ski. Send us home. Appreciate y'all tuning in live and free tonight. We could not be here without the help, though, of our generous sponsors. So we always have to give them big time shout outs here at the end of the game because they bring you the coverage free of charge. Thanks to Simonson Construction, now celebrating 50 years in existence. Mechanics Bank, Richland County's only independent community bank, as well as the Sutton Bank. You can do simple activities and make money with Casasa. Big shout out to Scout Construction and Josh Mobley, a Crestview graduate, always representing and holding it down for his Cougars and home and kitchen supply. Our awesome staff here tonight, Joy Hollenbeck was your camera, Emma Bell, our reporter and stat tracker. And for Travis Brardy, I'm Brian Skronsky saying so long from the Cougar Den. We'll see you for live streams tomorrow night right here on the OH Report. See you then.